Hello out there and welcome to English YouTube Plays. We're here with Onarike or Onarike. I don't know. It's one of those things. Um, and full disclosure, I did receive my copy of the game for free, and we're gonna we're gonna play this game. Um Dreams are fed by our own desires. Ooh, voice we acting. Since we are born, and this is what we call them until they become real. But have you ever wondered what happens to dreams that never come true? I have not. Prieto awoke in the same spot again. His memories vanished at dawn. There was little excitement behind circus walls. Wandering nor here nor there whilst picking gypsophilus was often the main source of entertainment. All right. Just as every night, Prieto had the recurrent feeling that the strange beings and pantomimes that inhabited the orb were somewhat unlike him. Okay, well, it said that the camera was the mouse. Oh, there we go. Alright, so it is, it is, it is wazzed. It was just a weird... So it's tank controls here, and then we go here, which is a little bit off-putting, but that's fine. Alright, so we've got this handsome-looking dude. Wow, that is a weird-looking dude. I do like the sky. we got some starry night sky. Okay, cool, cool. Um, I mean, that's obviously the first guy we're supposed to talk to. And let's go talk to him. All right. Fears of being branded as ridiculous drove him to desperately seek approval. In the end, his possessive little puppet took control of his movements with the strings that held them together. Right. Prieto was insecure and shy, and had never really found the courage to mingle with the others. But surely, just around the corner, that was all going to change. Surely. The clown, Prieto came to realize that there was something he wanted to say, but the puppet wouldn't let him. What if he just cut the strings? So... Cut the strings that hold the clown back. Okay, we can do that. Um, we can definitely do that. I've, I've got that on lockdown. Alright, uh, and by on lockdown I mean... I'm sure it won't be that difficult. Ooh, we can jump pretty high actually. We've got a quite, quite the hops. The, the camera... The camera is very odd. Who's this one? Look at that! Look at them clap! The them cheeks cheeks clapping. Felt that the rest of the beings in the circus weren't like him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I definitely uh, I don't have I'm not dummy thick like that. There's a seal. The beings in the circus would do the same thing night after night, like clockwork. Right. So. The more he stared at them, the more out of place Prieto felt. That's a finger. That is a weird finger, okay? What is this? What is While it? Prieto pondered over how to free the clown. He encountered greasy, obese Grand Matt, who, as he usually did, was milking his poor, skinny cow. Greed is a bottomless pit, a never ending effort which never provides true satisfaction. And Grand Matt was the epitome of a greedy soul. All right. He found utmost joy in storing all kinds of objects, for they were his most cherished treasure. He boasted to others about them and took displeasure in seeing them touched by hands that were not his own. Uh, right. Hey, that's cool. We knocked over some dominoes. Why do I see you lurking around here? Look at the mess you've made. Spat Grand Mac. So we've got a narrator. A little scared, dared not move. You are jealous of my wealth. Are you not? I am not. Grand Mac. Prieto timidly glanced at Grand Mac's prized possessions. An old pair of scissors caught his eye. My scissors. Two colleagues walk into a beat. Big round eyes. And long, long feet. Said Grand Mac. Prieto, eyes fixed on the scissors, did not utter a word. In view of this, Grand Mac said. Are you dumb? Or you just cannot talk. Do you like my scissors? If you want them, you will have to give me something precious in return. Sure, I can do that. Round like a saucer, unaffected by blows, and relentless bouncer. Get the scissors by giving something round to Mac. Prieto felt that the rest of the beings in the circus... I already read that one. 
So he's... The strange beings in the circus would do the same thing night after night. Right. Clockwork. This guy's blowing the fire. More at them, the more out of place Prieto felt. We got a snake charmer. There's something back there, though. Some sort of manta ray flying through the sky, because of course. Why would there not be? I do like this snake thing. The snake's cool. So we need to find something round to give to the uh, dude. And presumably... So that's where we came from. Someone had a ball. Prieto felt that the rest of the beings in the circus weren't like him. Um... Right. Well, here's like a house. It's weird. Okay. Well, that did nothing. Oh, we can get quite high up here. See over the edge. Running around the tent. Circus tent. Oh, there we go. Now we're up even higher. Get a bird's eye view up here. That's pretty cool. Alright, so where is something round? There's that stupid seal. He's vomiting stuff. I don't... I don't know, man. I don't see anything round just laying around. Ha. <laughs> um... I'm gonna try and get on top of that tree. Nope. Okay. Well, it was worth a try. It probably wasn't actually. Felt that the rest of the beings in the circus weren't like him. Can I? Can I? So. The strange beings in the circus would do the same thing night after night, like clockwork. So I need. Brown like a saucer, unaffected by blows, and relentless bouncer. Yeah, I uh, I heard that part of it, but I don't know what it is that you want. Oh, there's a ball up there. I can see it. Okay. So we've just got a little bit of a parkour challenge, I guess, is the idea. I knew that there was something to do with parkour, because you don't give a character hops like this without uh, intending for them to parkour a bit. Prieto felt that the rest of the beings in the circus weren't like him. Yep. Even if the thought of giving one of his precious possessions away did not come easy to Grand Mac, the sublime spherical perfection of Prieto's finding impressed him. After some hesitation, Grandmac decided on offering a truce. I mean, so you. It seems that you were not so dumb after all. You may have the scissors in exchange for the ball, he said. Silence is a hard argument to refute, and Prieto remained tight lipped. Grandmac handed over his precious scissors to Prieto and then admired his newly acquired orbicular treasure. Orbicular treasure, huh? I like that. Um, so let's go cut those puppet strings. Dun 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 dun. Do the same thing night after night. Dun 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 dun. returned to the clown's house. Again, he had the feeling that the clown wished to share something important, but the puppet wouldn't let him. Armed with his scissors and guided by his kind heart, Proto decided to cut the strings that held the clown captive. When he did, an enraged puppet stormed out of the circus walls, puffing in anger and leaving the door open while shouting, Do not call it quits! Uh, alright, I guess that's... ...from the puppet strings, the clown broke his silence and warily said to Prieto, Once, a long time ago, I was just like you. I too was full of hope, but over time... I became infected with laziness and neglect, and soon ended up trapped in my own misery. I wholeheartedly appreciate what you've done. I fear it is too late for me, but you still have time to leave this place. It is said that beyond the circus walls, within the great volcano, lies the well of truth. There, dreams come true. Aww. And I will show you something. Offered the clown. Right, so we cut the strings. Let's follow this dude. Or jump on top of him while he walks around. K. 
can't quite get over there. That's fine. Uh, he walks very slow. Walks very slow. Characters walking very slow is always very annoying. Alright. So now we're out here. Prieto followed the clown up to the gate. And once there, the clown said, I have been watching you closely. Night after night. And I believe you still have not learnt how to keep your memories at sunrise. Do you see that circular stone on the floor? It is a memory stone. There are many of them spread out throughout the orb. If you place yourself on top of one at dawn, time will begin to accelerate. Try it for yourself, and you will slowly see that when the sun rises, you will no longer feel lethargic, nor will your memory fail you. Cool. So to save the game. And then and then what happens? All right. Daytime arrived, and the memory stone took Prieto to the Jesopola field, a place of splendor, filled with light that made Prieto feel so light as a feather and full of hope. Still unaware, Prieto ignored that those beautiful spores floating through the air were going to be much needed on his journey. Right, so I actually just look like this. Wow, this is very white. So what are those things flying up there? There's like bees and stuff. So am I trying to catch these spores? Is that the... That's the goal? Alright. So... We just keep running around and... Oh, we can fly? What? Uh, that's dope. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know we could fly. That's a whole extra thing. There's a whole extra set of things. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, how many are we, how many are we supposed to be getting? I actually don't know. Oh, it's getting dark now. Not as... While Crypto busied himself with picking spores, night fell. Prieto returned to the orb, but on this occasion, unlike other nights, his memory had not deserted him. Uh, so I returned to the orb, I guess. That's the thing. The clown stood next to the memory stone and, determined to help Prieto, remarked, I see you have not been idle in the Gisophila field. You have handpicked quite a few spores. Do you remember the bright flowers that grow on the circus walls? I do. They are called Jesophilus. These flowers give you hope and make you be seen. If you cease to pick these flowers for a while, you will become invisible and will vanish into thin air until night falls again. Although flowers only grow naturally behind the circus walls, it is possible to plant them elsewhere. Come with me, said an enthused clown on their way to the gates of the Stonewood. Uh, all right. Oh, what just happened? All right, there we go. Stop that. Why is that happening? The game kept dropping me back out into the desktop. I mean, it wasn't crashing. It was just dropping me out to the desktop. An intrigued Prieto kept track of the clown. Once inside the wood, the clown said, Here. This here is the ideal spot to plant the spores you picked. You will soon see how quickly flowers full of hope bloom. Uh, right. Prieto did as he was told and planted a spore. In no time at all, bright flowers sprung up from the soil. The clown, full of excitement as he had once been before, said to Prieto, If you so desire to explore the orb, you ought to learn how to administer the spores correctly. I have marked out specific areas of the woods that are suitable for cultivation. If you plant seeds in these areas, you should be able to visit the flank. They tend to contradict themselves a fair bit, but the truth of the matter is, they hold many secrets regarding the orb. Not far from where they live lies a big stone heart. It is said to hold a secret within. Uh, alright. 
So we're the stonewood guided by the glimmering spots the clown had marked out to plant Gisopolis. Oh the plant the, the little plants there have eyeballs, of course. That totally makes sense. Um yep, yeah, and then we go up and up. And we plant it. Planted a spore, and it instantly grew into a plant. When he picked it from the ground, he noticed a renewed sense of hope from within, which spurred him onwards. And we're continuing. This is quite pretty. It's like a weird little like claymation-y um, universe. It's pretty cool. Right, and then we plant another one. We're doing we're doing amazingly well. And we'll just walk, I guess. Yeah, so we're gonna meet another character, and that'll be fun. I'm excited to meet another character. Um So it looks like it's sort of like it's like friendly kids style like puzzling and parkour and stuff. Alright, I thought there might have been more to it than just going up, but there's not. And oop. And oop. And we're going. Oop. And there we go. We fought began to feel somewhat weak. It was clear that he was in need of the magical Gisophila in order to remain visible. Right. So I, I got the magical Gisophila, I guess. Oh no. Oh god, that's not good. Alright, so how do we... There we go. And then the next one should come from this way. And then we go up. And then we can just ride this around in a circle, I guess. Just riding in a circle. Prieto needed Gypsophila so as not to become invisible. Uh, gotcha. So then what? Then what do we do? Oh, there's more that way, I see. And we go down this way, right? And we plant another one. Yeah, and we can go up over the edge. So we're just going through the forest, planting these gypsophila things. Um, got it, yeah. All right. She's pretty pushy about the gypsophila. I don't know what this other thing is that we're collecting, but we are collecting it and, it, and there is, there does seem to be a time limit on how long you can stand around waiting. So I guess if you fall down, then you end up having to go back way sooner. I don't, I don't actually know. Cause I was just going to collect all these spores, but I don't know, I actually don't know what they're for. And I guess I don't want to disappear. So we're just, we're just going around planting all of our gypsophila. There we go. And then looks like there's another one this way. Oops. We fell down. Ah. Right. And I guess we go up this. Oh hey, and we found we Driving to the land of the flanks was no mean feat. However, Prieto stuck to the task and managed to find their house. Nice! Prieto approached the flanks, who showed no sign of surprise at his presence. The face is a mirror of the soul, said one. Looks can be deceiving, added the other. Prieto stood totally still and wondered whether or not the flanks were talking about him. The confusion is crystal clear, affirmed the mouthless flank. He must be the clown's friend, said the smirking flank straight away. The hardest 
thing about having many friends is to know which ones you can call true. Added the mouthless blank. I wonder what he's after, one flank said. Curiosity killed the cat, said the other. But cats have seven lives, you know, added the first. Maybe it's love he seeks, said one of the flanks. Eternal love lasts only so long, added another. I love you not, you love me. 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 The flanks chanted repeatedly. Prieto was clearly starting to tire of the conversation. Yeah, I am. Love was in the air, and Prieto was beginning to choke. He decided the best thing would be to leave the flanks as they were, and continue to search for the big stone heart that the clown had spoken of. Alright, um, so that's a pretty good taste of the game. Uh, let's go look at the description and see what it has to say for itself. Alright, Onorike is an original 3D adventure puzzle and platformer video game which takes place in an intricate open world designed with a non-linear narrative and presented with a peculiar audio-visual aesthetic. Uh, that's true. Um, you've got the narrator, you've got the, uh, you know, you've got some weird sort of claymation-y kind of visuals. Um, yeah, it's pretty fun. It's pretty cool. Uh, let's see, it costs $15.71. You can you can play the demo if you want. So if you liked what you saw there, you can go play it yourself and try it out. Um, an enriching experience that invites to abstraction. If the demo seeks to dazzle the player, it's quite successful. Unarike is definitely one of the better 3D puzzle games that I've played. Um, throughout the game, the player will, be, will take the role of Prieto, a strange being unaware of his own nature, but who has the rare ability to become invisible. Exploration, stealth, and cultivating gypsophila flowers will be the key to unveiling the story of Prieto and the orb in which he lives. Sure. Uh, avoid the devourers of souls by becoming invisible. Strategically grow gypsophila flowers. Be amazed by its peculiar audio-visual style and discover its captivating non-linear story. So let's see. Uh, how could you dream? Uh, weird. That's a thing. Um, that's a very long review, and that's fine. Uh, I'm not going to write a review that long, but let's go look at Devilish Games, because they're the developer, and see if they've made anything else. So they've got Onorike, um, and then it looks like in 2016 they had a game called King Lucas, which is side-scrolling, uh, Path to, uh, Nemocene. Can't, there's no, doesn't have the screenies, and this one looks like a little puzzle game. Yeah, so, you know, they are working and developing games as they go. That's cool. I do like that. I like um, that sort of development schedule because it means they're actually trying to make good games. They're not just sort of making random things. Every movement counts. Right, because uh, eventually you turn invisible. There's that dude milking that cow. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool. There's uh, The voice acting is pretty fun. Um, the world is... Uh, oh, I guess it kind of is like the Nightmare Before Christmas, but it's got its own little vibe. There's like a little circus going on. Um, it's definitely, you know, puzzle platforming. And yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So if you do want to check it out, you can download the demo. Um, and then if you want to buy it, do buy it. It's uh, $15.71, which is a pretty good price depending on how long the game is, I guess. Um, I, you know, I didn't play it all the way through. I only played about 20 minutes, but it's pretty fun. So... I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. All that kind of stuff. Leave me a comment down below. Uh, check out the game if you like. And otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Class dismissed.